Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. In today's video, I will be making 4 projects using Gina K Designs wreath builder templates. I hope you'll stick around, see what I'm going to create, and find out how to see what Danny made as well. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here. In case this is your first time hearing about the Four on Friday series, I'll tell you a little bit about it before I get started. My friend Danny and I started this series. She participates on her blog, I participate here on YouTube, and each month we make four projects using one tool, technique, or product. So far we have done four projects using the same stamp set and four projects using a 6x6 six six paper pad. And for this month we're going to be creating four projects using the Gina K Designs Wreath Builder. If you want to see any of those other videos, I do have the playlist linked in the description box below and each of those will also have the links to Danny's blog. Speaking of Danny's blog, when you're done with my video here today, make sure to go check out and see what four projects she has created with the wreath builder. I haven't seen them yet, but I know that I'm going to love them. For my projects today, I will be using both of the wreath builder template kits. You have the original, which has spaces for three and three quarter inch or four inch squares, and the mini wreath builder, which is for two and three eighths inch squares. I like that you can get different sizes. I believe there is also even like a mega size or an extra large size if you're going to do decor or something or scrapbook pages maybe for that. To use these, you do need some type of stamp positioner and there are different ones out there. I will be using the Misty today and I will have Gina K's products and the Misty linked below if you want to check them out. Once I start creating my projects, I will go to a voiceover. Make sure that if I leave you with any questions, you leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. In front of me are the main items that I'll be using for my first project. I will be creating a card for this one. I pulled out four different Gina K Designs inks. Now you don't have to use her inks, I just got these for Christmas. I love the size for these wreath builders and there's a great assortment of colors. I will be using tomato soup, jelly bean green, peach bellini, and fresh asparagus. I pulled out the three and three quarter inch wreath builder. And then for my card, I'm going to be using two squares of paper that are the three and three quarter inches, one piece of pattern paper that is four inches by four inches, another piece of pattern paper that is four and a quarter by five and a half, and then finally I will be making a clear card. So I got out a clear card base. This was cut to four and a quarter by 11 inches tall and then folded in half for a top fold card base. The pattern papers that I'm using today are scraps from my Peachy Evergreen paper pad. It was a hot buy pad at Michael's and I used it for a recent project so since the scraps and the paper pad were already on my desk I decided to use these today. To get started on this piece I place my pattern paper on the inside of the card base and then I use one of those white pieces of cardstock on the inside as well. This is where I will write my personal message to the recipient. I forgot to mention earlier the stamp set that I'll be using for this card. When I bought my wreath builder templates, I chose the bundle and it came with this stamp set. It's a good just all occasion kind of set and it gets you started with lots of the little wreath elements. I chose one of the branches from the stamp set and I will be stamping that in jelly bean green around the outside of my piece of white cardstock. I won't go into too many details with how the wreath builder works. There are lots of other tutorials online, but basically you get an image, 
Stamp it eight times, each time moving your piece of white cardstock one space in the template, and it creates this gorgeous wreath. Then you can fill this in with other elements. You'll see here that I grabbed a flower from the stamp set, and I will be stamping that in tomato soup ink from Gina K Designs. I do only stamp this four times. You'll see that I turn it two spots. That way when I stamp my other flower, it will fill in the other spots that are left. I just thought this was a nice way to get a variation in the flowers. You might have also noticed that I have been inking up the stamps each time with Versamark ink before I use the colored ink. The reason I do this is sometimes with new stamps, they don't stamp nice and solid, and I find that if I ink it up with the Versamark first, it gives me a more smooth, solid image. Now what I'm gonna do to finish my wreath off is I grabbed out two of the leaf images and I will be stamping those in fresh asparagus around the outside. I just like that it adds a little detail and a little bit more color to the wreath. To finish off the focal point, I grabbed one of the sentiments from the stamp set and this one says, a friend like you is hard to find. I will be stamping that in that tomato soup ink and you'll notice here that when I stamped it the first time it didn't stamp completely that is the wonderful thing about a stamp positioner I just placed that right back down and made sure that it was nice and crisp now that that was done it's time to put the card together I matted the focal point with the striped peach paper and then that got adhered to the top center of my card you'll notice that the part on the front then covers up the spot on the inside where I'll write the personal message Here are the products that I'll mainly be using for this second project, which is also another card. This one is going to have a baby theme, so this could be given to a new parent or at a shower. For the stamps for this card, I will be using the same one as I used for the last one, the Wreath Builder Bundle Stamp Set. And then I also got out the Reasons to Celebrate set. This has lots of different little icons you can add to the wreath, whether it's for getting married, a new job, teacher. It also has baby themed items. I'm gonna be using the Oh Baby Sentiment. And then some of the icons I might use, they have a little ducky, a teddy bear, a stroller, and then little bitty baby feet. For the card itself, again, I will be using the three and three quarter inch wreath builder template. I pulled out some more Gina K Designs inks. When I first got all my inks for Christmas, I went and made a little kind of cheat sheet or a swatch for each of the inks I have. So what I did is I tried to find some cardstock in pink and blue that would match some of her inks. And I did find out that the Dusty Rose matched the pink I had and the Ocean Mist matched the blue I had. And both of those cardstocks came from this set that I just get at Michael's. For the pieces, I have a piece of white that is four and a quarter by one and three quarters. The gray piece is four and a quarter by two inches. I of course have my white three and three quarter inch square, a pink square that is four inches, a piece of blue that is four and a quarter by five and a half, and then I just got out and made a white card base. I, I forgot to mention I did get out the jelly bean green also. I thought that color looked nice with these other two in case I want to pull in an accent color. For this card, I'm going to have my wreath look a little bit different. Instead of the branches going around the outside in a circle, I will start kind of the stem part of the wreath on the inside of the circle and go around again eight times with this stamp set. You'll notice this gives it kind of a more wild or a more rustic effect when the wreath is completely done. I did use two different branches for this wreath. Once I had went around with the first one, I went and got a different branch and then filled in those more open areas around the outside. Now to give this more of a baby card feel, I got out those two little baby feet from the stamp set and I stamped those around the outside in pink and blue. 
each color I did four times. So instead of just moving my cardstock one notch or one eighth of a turn each time, I turned it one quarter of a turn so everything would line up and I would end up with eight little feet. The next image I got out was the little baby carriage and I will be stamping these in the gray or the slate ink from Gina K. This again, I only stamped four times around the outside. And once this was done, I then used a little teddy bear image from that same stamp set and I stamped it four times on the inside of the wreath. Now this was probably a step I could have skipped because later you'll see when I cut this for the final card, you really can't even see the teddy bears. I started putting this card together by placing the blue cardstock piece on the front of the card base. Then I matted my focal point with that pink cardstock. And now to make that fill from top to bottom, I cut my piece in half at the two inch mark. That is because the pink piece of cardstock is four inches tall. This will then allow me to adhere these to the top and then the other one to the bottom and it fills this space. Now to fill up that area in the middle, I will stamp my sentiment on a strip. I used the O oh Baby stamp from the stamp set and I stamped it in that slate ink again. And then once that was done, I used some of those little icon images from that stamp set to decorate the rest of the strip. You'll see there I did two blue teddy bears, two pink teddy bears, and then I added a little green pair of baby feet. I will tell you that this card turned out a lot different than what I was envisioning in my head. I ended up not liking it as much as I thought I would with the split and I actually wasn't going to share it with you. But then my daughter came down, I showed her the card and she thought it was cute and it started to grow on me more. It just goes to show that not every card I make is a winner. I know that the magic of editing makes it look like that, but it isn't always the case. But that doesn't mean that we can't go ahead and use that card. For my next project, I wanted to create something that showed that you don't necessarily have to have the wreath builder stamps to be able to make your own wreaths. Now I will be using one of the wreath builder templates. For this one, I will be using that mini one. But for the stamps, I'm going to be using this clear stamp set. It is a stampability set and it is just for envelopes. Um, you know, kindly deliver to, please deliver to. And then there are some little vines here and accents that look at your stamp sets in a different way. Do you have any stamp sets with similar little items that you could turn into a wreath? I will also be making a non-card project for this. I'm gonna be decorating an envelope to go with the card that I made. For my inks, I will be using two of the inks from the card. I'll be using the Peach Bellini and the Fresh Asparagus. I will be decorating the bottom left hand corner of the front of my envelope and you will notice that as I turn my envelope when I do this, that bottom left hand corner is what I will align at every one of the eight turns. Because the envelope doesn't fit in the template, it does hang off, it's very important that you keep track of this corner and make sure it's always aligned. Now you'll see there that I had some of the ink kind of um, went over the edge of the envelope. You will want to make sure to clean that up before you rotate your image because this ink could get on the back. Now if this wasn't an envelope, that wouldn't be a huge deal because I would probably be matting that with something. I chose my second little leafy branch and this one I will be stamping in the peach bellini. I do the same process with the eight turns and the eight stamps and then my wreath is done. This will just be just basic simple wreath.
to finish this project, I chose the Kindly Deliver to Sentiment stamp from the stamp set. I placed that on my envelope where I thought it looked good, and then I was able to use that white grid that's on the top of the Misty to make sure my sentiment was nice and straight. I stamped that in the fresh asparagus ink, and then this project is completed. For my next project, I'm going to be using basically the same inks. I will again be using the mini wreath builder, but this time I'm going to be making a gift tag. I will be using a piece of white cardstock that I cut to two and three eighths inches wide by four inches tall. And then for my stamps, I will be using the stamp set that came with the mini wreath builder. Just like with the envelope project, it's important to keep in mind which corners of your piece of cardstock fit into the wreath builder template. For this tag, since it is as wide as the piece that would normally go into this template, I am gonna have those bottom two corners always align at each turn in the corners on the template. Because this wreath is a little bit smaller, I will be stamping each of my branches four times around the outside of the wreath. This means that instead of just turning it one spot, I will turn it two spots. And I did use two different limbs or two different branches from the stamp set. Next, I chose two of the flowers from the stamp set to fill in on the wreath. I will be inking these both up in the Peach Bellini ink, and I did stamp these eight times versus just the four times like I did for the branches. To add a little more detail and to bring in the darker green ink, I chose a teeny tiny stamp from the set that was three little dots. I stamped this eight times and then to finish my wreath off, I chose a to and from from the stamp set to stamp right in the center of my wreath. Off camera, I cut another scrap of pattern paper to two and three eighths by four inches, and then I pulled out my We Are Memory Keepers tag punch board to put notches in the top corners and a little hole at the top center of each tag. Once those were all done, I adhered these pieces together with just a little bit of an angled offset. I thought that pattern in the background helped tie in all the colors from my wreath and added something to the tag. To finish off the tag, I cut some green baker's twine and threaded that through the holes at the top of the tag. I just liked the little extra texture this added. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I created these four projects using the Gina K Designs Wreath Builder. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. I hope my projects today showed you how versatile that tool can be. Now make sure to head over to Danny's blog. It is linked below. And until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.